The Return is a film that came out in 2003 that's directed by Andrei Zvayaginstev. I tried with that absolute unit of a last name. And once again, this is a patron request from Tyree. It goes without saying that once again, I very much appreciate and adore his support for this channel. And if you also want to get on board with patron requests, it's right there on Patreon, 50 bucks a month, and you can request any film that you want, and I will watch and review it just like I'm doing right now. But I was really shocked to know that I had never heard of this film until Tyree requested it to me. Because when it comes to Andre's works, I've seen Loveless and I've seen Leviathan. And those are two films that I really, really dug. Both of those films were just absolutely drenched in melancholy and just had an overwhelming darkness to them. But at the same time, feeling very rooted to reality and authentic. And I can safely say that The Return is a perfect example of why I loved both of those films. It just carries on the exact same thing that I would expect from this filmmaker and why I admired him so much up until this point. This film is about two young brothers, one that I would say is a teenager, and the other one is still very much a young child, probably around the age of 9 or 10, and they know nothing of their father, they have never met them the entire life, and then all of a sudden, one day, out of the blue, their father interjects himself into their life, and they go on a family trip together. And narratively speaking, that is basically it. Like, I'm not even leaving that much out of the plot. That is what this film is. It's a very simple plot, but it somehow manages to feel very layered, very complex, and keep you on your toes and feel unpredictable up until the end of its runtime. But there is so much about this film that I found incredibly compelling. It's difficult to know where to even start, but if I had to start somewhere, I would just get this right out of the way and say that the performances in this film are absolutely incredible. The performances from the children in this film are astronomically great. I mean, it is incredibly impressive stuff. Uh, the youngest child, Iva Dabronovov, I don't know how to pronounce his name, um, but the youngest child in this film, he was my favorite performance in this film personally, and that is honestly probably one of the greatest child performances I've ever seen put to film. He has to portray a more defensive and emotionally complex character in the way that he responds to his father figure throughout the entire film. And I just thought, like, he just knocked it way out of the park. Like, it's not even in the same fucking city. There's a handful of scenes in this movie where I was in shock at how well he is portraying these complex emotions. Just, like, every little emotional nuance in his performance whether it's body language or facial expressions I was like damn this kid has so much talent and the other child actor that plays the teenager brother in this film uh his name is Vladimir Gaidin and he also had a pretty big task to fulfill I mean he has to kind of play contrast to the way his brother is reacting to this whole father situation um his character is someone you can tell kind of has a more desperate yearning to appease the father and you can just tell just really wants his validation because of how many excuses he's making for his behavior and I'll dive more into that in a little bit but one other fact that I have to say about this actor and it's something that's incredibly tragic that I just found out before hopping on camera is that this young boy died before this film could even be released um he died at the age of 16 from drowning and again as I mentioned it's something that is horribly tragic i mean this kid is just reeking with talent and just the fact that something like that happened to him after portraying and showcasing all this potential that he had as an actor is just fucking heartbreaking and even more just haunting about it is that there's a huge element and motif in this film and also just in terms of setting that revolves around water and also drowning and just to pay my respects to this young man i think it's something that is incredibly important for everybody to know watching this movie. Konstantin Lavroneko plays the father of these two boys in this film, and he also just fucking kills it in this movie. He is, there is such a subtle menacing nature about him, and this dark mystique revolving around his character that is just so engaging, but also just builds so much suspense throughout this film's experience. Because we as the audience are left in the dark about his father's background and his motives just as much as the kids are in this movie. The children in this movie know absolutely nothing about him. They have no idea where the father is taking them. And again, 
same thing as us as audience members. We are just here. It feels like a very like fly on the wall experience because again, it's a very simple movie that, you know, you know, it, it doesn't really go for all these crazy cinematic moments. It's just, it just goes for a very authentic and in some ways a slice of life kind of movie just in a very dark and harrowing way. But I do think it's that ambiguity revolving around the father's character that really elevates this film's experience and makes it even a better discussion piece than it already was. Because the father in this film apparently disappeared 13 years ago and now he's back into these boys' lives and there's a lot of inferences about where he was and what he currently does for a living. Personally, I think there's plenty of valid implications that this guy is actually a gangster. Like, this guy is involved... And, like, he's actively involved in sus criminal activity. But again, it's very subtle with it, and all we can do as the audience is speculate based on some of the weird shit that we see him do. But I really loved the opening sequence to this movie. But I mean, I pretty much loved all this movie, to be honest. But I think the opening sequence really reeled me in and just was like hook, line, and sinker. Got me engaged right from the get-go. And... I think metaphorically kind of sets a foundation for what I think this film is trying to convey. Because that's a whole other thing about this film was that when I first watched it, I was like, I don't really know exactly thematically in terms of messages what this film really wanted me to take away from it. But I think that's part of its uniqueness and that's part of why it's special. And again, a huge part of why I feel like it did feel like a fly on the wall experience. The youngest child character in this movie refuses to jump from a high place down into the ocean and obviously it's because of pure fear and there's these you know thematic notions about his character being a coward that is reoccurring throughout this film's runtime and I feel like again that does set a pretty reasonable foundation for what I feel like this film is going for within the father and son's dynamic because the father character in this film throughout the entire film just has this incredibly aggressive, old-fashioned, pick-yourself-up-by-the-bootstraps type of attitude of how to raise young boys. And at first, when you observe his character, you're kind of like, all right, yeah, this guy's definitely aggressive and imposing and assertive, especially for somebody who just randomly showed up in his kids' lives after vanishing for 13 years. Uh, just has this very, like, entitled and assertive attitude. But... For a little bit, you're kind of willing to give him the benefit of the doubt and just see where things go. But then it, it definitely hits a hard line where you're like, okay, this guy is just straight up abusive. And as I mentioned earlier in this review, the youngest child character has a more defensive attitude towards it. He's a lot more skeptical. He picks it up like instantly and he can just tell like right out of the get go that this guy is not behaving appropriately in a way that I feel comfortable with. But anyways, going back to the father character and his dynamic with his children and how it all relates to the opening scene of this movie, I think that as this film progresses, thematically I feel like it's trying to kind of draw a hard line in the sand about when too much is too much and kind of have some kind of commentary about the abusiveness of this style of parenting. And again, there's more layers to it that I'll get into in a second, but that is one element of it that I really thought about. And the reason why I, the reason why I bring that up first is because I feel like there's, you know, a lot of old fashioned fathers out there that would probably watch this movie and say, no, this, this father is technically not so in the wrong because he just really wants to raise his kids to be men when they grow up. You know, they have to learn the hard way. It's tough love. It makes it to where they aren't cowards and they're able to take risks and they don't fear as much because that's a huge part of being a man. And again, that kind of directly relates to the beginning scene in this movie about how the young child is full of fear and doesn't want to take a leap. I just think it kind of shows you that through this very extreme style of old-fashioned parenting that... It might encourage your child to make a leap, but it might not be the leap that you want them to make. But I also think it's about the chaos and the disasters that can happen when you force something that just isn't meant to be. Because as much as I would just like to write off the father character as a complete and total asshole with no redeemable qualities, this film does have very few scenes 
where I feel like in a very subtle way is trying to express to the audience that there is something within him that does want to have a connection with his children. And that's part of the reason why he did come back and, you know, take them on this trip with him. But obviously, as we see how this film progresses, it's just something that is not within him. You can tell that he was definitely out of their lives for a very long time for a very good reason. And the final 20 minutes or so of this movie is insane to me. Like, it's very, it's incredibly daunting and harrowing. And just the whole time you feel this big weight on your shoulders. And, I mean, again, it's thanks to the narrative writing and the direction and the performances. But I remember after this movie ended, I just thought to myself, like, damn, this is, this is some heavy shit. I don't really have any major criticisms of this movie. I have a few minor ones, one being just some choices in dialogue writing. There was a few moments where I thought the dialogue was a little bit on the nose, not in terms of narrative information, but just... Um, just in terms of giving maybe some thematic details away. And um, also, I feel like there's this musical score at the very end of this movie, like in the final 15 minutes or something climactic happens, that I just thought was, I don't know, again, it was just, it was imposing a little bit too much emotion on the audience that I just wasn't really vibing with. And also, there's some moments of, like, obvious ADR, like audio dubbing of, you know, the, the, the character's dialogue speak, and I mean, I don't really care about that, honestly, but that is something that was noticeable when I was watching it. But all in all, I really do feel like this film is quite incredible, and in some ways kind of underrated and overlooked, because I don't really hear anybody talking about this movie. I know that probably when it came out, it got like a bunch of buzz, and I mean, I know that it was nominated for a Golden Globe, which is really cool, but I just feel like ever since then, this movie just kind of just went into obscurity and no one really talks about it. So I'm going to give The Return a soft 9 out of 10. This is a film that I feel like would fit the Criterion Collection beautifully. Um, I mean, I'm kind of surprised that nobody has really brought it up in my own film circle, uh, you know, really asking for it. Uh, but really, any of Andre's movies would work quite well, whether it be Leviathan or Loveless. Like, I think any of his movies would fit really nicely in the collection. But this one would be pretty cool, considering it's his older film, and um, and considering that it's, to me, very overlooked. But that's all I got to say about The Return. If you really enjoyed what I had to say about the film, just give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.